Good afternoon, Cross Timbers. Today is Friday, March 1st, 2019, and I'm Stephen Johnson. Lambda Week, City Council Race, and Securing the South China Sea. All this and more coming up next on Texan TV. In campus news, this week was Lambda Week as members of Lambda Theta Eta put on events to celebrate their organization. Their president and vice president gave us more information on this week. Hi, I'm Taryn Gibbs. And I'm Yadira Castillo. And we're, we're the current president and vice president of Lambda Theta Eta. Lambda Theta Eta is a gender neutral service fraternity for LGBT plus students and allies. We were founded May 2nd of 2018 on the core values of acceptance advocacy, activism, leadership, and service. And this week has been our week of events. On Monday, we hosted a fundraiser with Panda Express to raise money for our organization. On Thursday, we held a study buddy event in the Student Center. But on Friday, we will be hosting our philanthropy event for the Charleston Food Pantry from 6 to 9 p.m. in Math 125. This event will be a mini carnival with fun games and prizes for an entry fee of $5 or donations of some dorm stay food items. We, we can't, can't wait to see you there! This evening is their This Is Me Carnival in Math 125 from 6 to 9 p.m. You can bring donations for the food pantry to play games and win prizes. In local news, according to the Stephenville Empire Tribune, Kerry Boynton has announced he has withdrawn from the city council race Wednesday afternoon. Boynton cites a medical issue as the reason for leaving the race, saying, I was admitted to the hospital Saturday and released Tuesday. After being released, Boynton said that the event prompted his dropout. The council race is now down to two, Ricky Thurman, a local insurance agent, and Bradley Oglesby, a retired salesman. The election will take place May 4th, with early voting happening April 22nd to 30th. And now, today's Texas national and international news from the Associated Press. In state news, a man convicted of killing his wife's parents and brother nearly 30 years ago was executed Thursday in Huntsville. Billy Coble was put to death by lethal injection after a jury decided on the death penalty back in 2008. He was found guilty of murdering his wife's mother, father, and brother by shooting them in their homes nine days after kidnapping his wife, who was seeking a divorce. Coble had little to say at his execution, his last words being, that'll be five dollars. Coble's son, daughter-in-law, and friend became emotional and violent at the time of execution and had to be removed from the room, taken to the courtyard, and handcuffed. They were later charged with resisting arrest and taken to the Walker County Jail. Coble was 70 years old, and prosecutors described him as having a heart of scorpions, saying that he felt no remorse at all for his actions. Coble becomes the third inmate t put to death in the United States this year, and the second in Texas. In national news, according to the AP News, Mike Pompeo, U.S. Secretary of State, is committing to ensure the South China Sea remains open to all kind of, of navigation and that China does not pose a threat in regard to the busy sea lanes. Pompeo was in Manila on Friday to assure the Philippines that America will come to its defense if its forces, aircraft, or ships come under armed attack in the South China Sea. In international news, for more of today's national and international news, we turn to the AP News Minute. This is AP News Minute. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un held official meetings with Vietnamese leaders in Hanoi. His summit with President Trump ended without a deal just a day earlier. Michael Cohen says he'll return to the House Intelligence Committee for more questioning next week. The former Trump lawyer testified before the committee behind closed doors on Thursday. Floodwaters from Northern California's Russian River have started to recede. Two Sonoma County towns can only be reached by boat, but officials say people may be able to drive to those areas on Friday. And Oregon's governor has declared an emergency in 10 counties due to heavy snowfall. The snowpack is 160% more than normal in some parts of the state. Mike Hemp in the Associated Press with AP News Minute. In sports, a jury in Central Texas found a former Baylor University football player not guilty of raping another student in 2016. This is the latest case linked to a scandal that rocked the nation's largest Baptist university and led to several top leaders leaving. The jury debated for about two hours before acquitting Sean Oakman of sexual assault. The woman who said that she was raped testified that she was intoxicated when Oakman assaulted her. She said that she asked Oakman if she could leave his duplex that night, but he wouldn't let her. 
Oakman's attorney told jurors that it was consensual sex. Oakman and his family were overjoyed when the verdict was read. Baylor University was accused of failing for years to properly investigate sexual assault allegations. In 2014 and 2015, two Baylor football players were convicted of sexual assault. This resulted in the firing of the then football coach and resignation of the athletic director. Since then, the university has handled several lawsuits from women who said their allegations of sexual assault by football players were mishandled or ignored. Also, Jason Witten has announced on February 28th that he will be returning for his 16th season for the Dallas Cowboys. And now we turn to the Associated Press for the Showbiz Minute. AP Showbiz Minute. Stars including Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth, Sharon Stone and Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn came out for an unforgettable night in Los Angeles Thursday. The A-listers walked the red carpet for the Hanks and Spielberg family's annual cancer research fundraiser, where Kate Hudson and Gabrielle Union were honoured for their charity work. Yo-Yo Ma brought both music and a call for social change to Flint, Michigan. On Thursday, the cellist performed for more than 100 fans inside a gymnasium during his visit to the city that's still feeling the effects of a lead-contaminated water crisis. The musician called a day of action to demonstrate culture's power to create moments of shared understanding. Actor Idris Elba says DJing at the recent wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle was quote, mind-blowing and great and an honour. Speaking to the AP, Elba also said that being named People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive was the biggest compliment you can get, adding, my ego is in check, when I wake up in the morning, I'm not very sexy, trust me. This is Matt Kemp with AP Showbiz Minute. We turn to Haley Barnett for the weather. According to the National Weather Forecast, today there is a high of 50 and a low of 47. On Saturday, tents will hit a high of 51 and a low of 37 with a chance of showers all day. Sunday's high will be in the low 40s with a slight chance of showers and a low getting down to a chilly 18 degrees. Have a great day, Texans. This has been a production of Texan TV News, a product of the Texan News Service from the Tarleton State University campus in Stephenville, Texas. Watch us live on Apogee Channel 2.1 in the dorms at 12.30 weekdays. If you live off campus, tune in on Northland Cable Channel 9. You can follow the Texan News Service on Facebook and Twitter and check out our website at www.texannews.net for all of your latest local, state, national, and international news. Today's broadcast was produced by McKenna Hubert, Jessica White, Haley Barnett, Stephen Johnson, and Avery Weatherman. Have a wonderful day, Texans.